Hey guys, welcome to another Master Riff Lesson. Today we're going to be looking at It's Showtime by David Lee Roth, which is off his third album, A Little Ain't Enough, which has the legendary Jason Becker on guitar, and he was only 21 when he recorded this. So, tuning wise, I'm a half step down, so I've got E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and then E flat at the top. Now this tune's a really fast swung kind of boogie. You're gonna have your first boogie song. And the challenge with this, I guess, is just playing it at this sort of tempo. So the riff is four bars, it's kind of repeated about six times. And we start off with something that sounds like this. Okay. So this is another one of these swung feels, but it's a really fast swing. So when you've got two eighth notes, you're not gonna be having a nice even two equal halves of the beat. You're gonna have a long first bit, short second bit. And what we start off with is the A string. I'm gonna pick this down up. Then I'm gonna do a pull off three to zero in the A string there. Yeah, and I use the middle finger for that. Then I'm gonna do a pull off two to zero in the G string. But I'm gonna use my middle finger for this. So I think this riff is probably majority played with uh, hybrid picking. Jason Becker would use some hybrid picking in his playing. So we're gonna be using the pick, and then this middle finger to do a two zero pull off in the G string. Then I use the pick again, I'm gonna do a three, four hammer on in the A string. Yeah, so slowly that first bar sounds like this. Okay. Now you've done that three, four hammer, I'm gonna do the open A string again twice. Okay. So you get that swing fuel to it. And then what I'm gonna play is the fifth fret of the B and E strings and I bar that with my fourth finger. And I pluck that with my middle and ring finger. So I'm still using this hybrid picking here. Okay. Then I'm gonna do two to five hammer on the D string with the middle finger. And then I play the open A string but slightly kind of pan muted but with a downstroke. Okay, and that kind of leads into the next bit. So this second bar kind of goes. Yeah. Now what you're doing in the third bar is you're going to come down seven, fifth, fourth, second fret in the D string here. And I use my fourth, second, first, and then first. In between each of those, so I'm playing all these with the middle finger. But what I'm going to be doing is playing this kind of lightly palmuted A string with the downstroke. Yeah, I'll talk about that bit at the end there. So it's like 7th fret, then open A string, the downstroke, middle finger plays 5th fret, downstroke, 4th fret, middle finger, downstroke. Then I move down to the 2nd fret, so make sure you get that jump there, particularly this high tempo. And what I do is I then play this next A string with an upstroke with this pick, because I'm thinking of it teeing up the next bit, yeah? So slowly that bar kind of goes. Yeah. Then what I'm doing the next bar, so if you think of this A string we just did with an upstroke. I'm now going to play a little C triad. So play third fret the A string with the second finger. Pick. Then I'm going to play second fret the D string with the middle finger of my right hand. And then the open G string uh, with the ring finger here. Yeah, so it's like a ring third, fifth, C major chord there. Yeah, again, you've got that swing fuel to it. Then I'm going to play a D triad. So play fifth fret the A string with the fourth finger. And of course, the, the feel of this, you sit in that a little bit longer. Then I'm going to play fourth fret of the D string with the middle finger right hand. And my ring finger plays second fret of the G string. Yeah. And then you can start off the riff again with this A string that ties into the next bar to give you the kind of swing feel. So that kind of last bar kind of goes. Yeah. So when you put the four bars together, slowly it sounds like this. Yeah, and that downstroke ties into the next bar, and then you're kind of starting your riff with the upstroke. Okay, now we're playing this riff six times, but after your um, your second time, you do you do your little C triad, and then you just do the D root note, so there's a bit of space there. Then you start the riff again. Yeah, 
yeah. But after the, I guess it would be after the fourth time, he does this little thing where he does the, he does like a C triad, and then he plays like a D power chord, so you go straight to the D, so it kind of goes, and you do fifth fret the A string, and then seventh fret the D string, so it's like a little D power chord, and can maybe a slight slide off there in the seventh fret, so that kind of bar goes, uh, those two bars, yeah, just to delineate that kind of group of four bars in the next group of four bars effectively. So, after that bit, we play the riff twice again, and then we end it basically, we have our usual. So, this little transition at the end, we do our C triad. Uh, no, we don't do our C triad, we come down. Then I play a little C power chord, so I'm playing like third fret the A string. Then I'm doing fifth in the D and the G. Yeah. Then I'm going to play this seventh fret uh, of the D and the G string, so I'm going to play this little D power chord inversion. Go up one fret. And then I've got an E power chord, so I'm doing seventh fret the A string, nine in the D and G. But I've got the open B and E strings in there as well, but the sense of it sort of kind of rings. So that last iteration, the riff sounds like this. Yeah. And that's it. That's the riff. So this is a tricky one to get up to speed. Um, if you're not used to hybrid picking, that's your kind of first hurdle, is getting used to playing um, adjacent strings, particularly with the middle finger and like the pick. So you can take just power chords, or play the riff, I guess, to get used to that little kind of movement, because your movement has to be very, very small to kind of do that. Obviously you get the swing feel of it as well, but you could break it down into sections. That could be your first little bit, and then you've got this. And I'm ending on that second fret, so I'm not playing the A string at the end of that. And that way you can work on that little kind of two string bit, and then you've got that little bit. Yeah, where it works on your control of doing that pick, middle, and then kind of ring finger. Yeah, so it's an awesome riff. Um, Jason Becker is, is a legend, of course. Um, if by any chance you've never heard of him before, I highly recommend you just go on YouTube and search for Jason Becker. Uh, if you can find uh, Not Dead Yet as well, his uh, documentary about his life, I highly recommend you watch that as well. It's fantastic. The man is a true uh, musical inspiration. So, if you want access to the Helix patch for this that I created, or the kind of tones and things, come on over to the Patreon group. You can get access to that. You can access to the Sound Slice tab as well, the animated tab. So you can pop it on and loop little bits if you want to work on those little bits individually. Uh, you also get access to all the materials for the lessons we've had up for, you know, Master That Lake, you know, uh, Master That Solo, backing tracks, loads and loads of stuff. Also got the Discord server up now as well. So you can come over and chat with the rest of the guys. Uh, we're talking about riffs at the moment and what makes a riff great. Um, you can also come out, uh, follow me on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well if you're on those kind of platforms. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have fun with it. And I'll see you soon.